What's up YouTube, back here again with another video. And as you already just seen, turtle mode is super awesome. So uh, I just wanted to make this quick touch in video, talk about a few things. Uh, I don't think that each of these things kind of is worth a video in themselves, but I figured we'd wanna, you know, I wanna cover some of these things cause I think some of them are kind of cool. So uh, number one, obviously since you've seen turtle mode, um, I fly mainly uh, the Matek F405, and up until recently, there wasn't uh, a version of Betaflight 3.2 that was available for the Matek F405. There is now, and I am working on trying that out with um, you know turtle mode and 3.2 with a Matek board. But uh, I've had I ran into another friggin' issue. If you're if you've seen my build videos for this Hyperlow. All right. Um, when I first got the board, it was doing weird things. Like it was, it was disconnecting and not connecting. I had to use a driver fixer a few times. Um, then, for some reason, my OSD control of the uh, Matek VTX stopped working, and it was locking up my board. And I had like all kinds of goofy stuff. I kind of got it fixed, and then I updated it to 3.2, and now it just freaks out and won't fly just does this spinning thing of death and then now it won't reconnect to the computer so I'm going to say that the that this board is something's messed up my other ones are fine and I actually ordered a Betaflight F4 which I should have tomorrow so we're gonna do a video on the Betaflight F4 and we're gonna run it on on this guy so we're gonna have the hype trains on the hyperlow with the uh, Betaflight F4 board so we'll get to that um, review of the hype trains is coming soon um, I got this finally running. I got my replacement motors. I got the replacement for the burnt one. Uh, thank you, Rotor Riot. Appreciate that. I sent them the old one, the burnt up one. So they're going to take a look at that one, which I also find cool. And uh, yeah, so that's up with that. So that's the issue I'm having there. So in here, I built this with the DYS F4. And I will. Uh, I'll also put the video of me smoking this thing. I will try to insert it right here. Building kind of with the fact that you kind of have an idea of what you're doing a little bit. Uh, you know, this is, oh, smoke. Fuck. Yeah, how about the smoke? Whoops, let the smoke out. Did a whole bit of build video and it's pretty much wasted because I let the smoke out. But I managed to um, resurrect the board because it looks like I only smoked the PDB function of the board. So we got a Matek PDB on there in the bottom, the DYS F4 Pro running with an XM Plus uh, receiver, running Betaflight 3.2. Uh, these are D-Shot capable ESCs. So boom, we got turtle mode. And what you seen in the beginning of the video, uh, I had a crash, I ran into a tree, I was upside down, I rocked it around, flipped it right over, and got back in the air. It was absolutely freaking awesome. The coolest feature. Now the one big thing about turtle mode, it works well, it does what it's supposed to do, but you gotta keep in mind what type of quad you're using it on, what issues you have with the with that quad. Um, you know, if you have a like a bottom battery quad and like say when you crash your antenna always falls down into your prop line, might not be, you know, you might want to be careful using that mode. You really need to think about it. This quad, every time it crashes, the only thing, uh, you know, and you got to check your kind of what your props do when they bend and break. This particular quad, when these props get smacked, they they smash. These are King Kong props. When you hit them, uh, if it's enough force to bend it, it breaks them. So, you know, I'm not worried about chopping up my ECs as much. Of course, anything can happen. This antenna is pretty sturdy back here. It's well out of the prop line, so if it gets bent down or bent over, it's got plenty of room to move around before it gets into the prop line. And then the battery is strapped on top, which kind of gives it a little bit of space to pivot on. So, turtle mode on Betaflight 3.2, awesome. So if you're running it, you know, watch Joshua Barwell's video on how to set it up, and you'll be good to go. Because there's a couple things you got to do. Uh, make sure you read the comments, and then you can that feature. Um, next thing, Racer Star 
These are the Racial Star 2305S motors, the 2600 KB motors. And a lot of people talk about these motors, right? Uh, everybody says for the price, they're good for the price, blah, blah, blah. Well, as far as durability goes, I've crashed the hell out of this thing. Durability is fine so far. You can definitely feel the quality difference between something like this and something like a hype train motor or a returner R4, you know, like a brother hobby motor. You can definitely feel the difference. However, the major problem I have, quality aside, feeling aside, flight aside, because I'm going to be real, they fly good. When they're in the air and they're flying, they fly good. However, I'm getting major desyncs, major, like, actual I guess I'm pretty sure they're like actual desyncs where it's flying and the mag, uh, the electrical current that's causing the motor to spin actually splits from the magnets on the bell and then it has to go around and catch back up and then pick the motor back up. It's It does happen quick and I haven't gone down but I will try to show you the desyncs in the video. At the end of this video I'll put some more DVR up and I'll try to show you the... Um, I'll show you the desyncs, but like you're going, like I'll take off, and then it just goes, and then it's just, you see, you see the camera go, and you hear it go, you hear it make that, like, noise, it's pretty distinct noise, it's like, you're skipping. Uh, so for me, these Racial Star motors ain't worth the price. I have some AOK, uh, the AOK motors coming in, um, the $13 motors, uh, I got them in green coming in, so we're going to put them on something, to try them out. Um... But yes, it's turtle motor we covered, the Racial Star motors, like I said, I'm not a big fan. Um, not, not that big of a fan. They fly well, but if you're going to have like quality issues with the desyncing and everything, you know, what the hell, right? Uh, the other thing, these guys right here, these DYS, these are DS30A by DYS, they're B-L-L-E-S, ESEs running, I got them running D-Shot 600. I'm pretty impressed with those. You can get a set of four of these off Banggood for like 30 bucks, 33 bucks. Um, so if you're looking for some ESCs, take maybe take a look at these guys because uh, again, I'm running turtle mode and everything. Um, pretty impressed with those guys. Uh, let's see. Where's your store? Is that all? Uh, I'm not a big fan of four inch. That's the other thing. Uh, I feel like if you're if you're building a quad this big and heavy, maybe my frame isn't a proper four inch frame. You might as well just build a five inch. So. Uh, Alright, I think that's it for this. Like I said, I'll put some DVR at the end of the desyncing, some more of the turtle mode stuff. Uh, this flies good, it's kind of cool, but it literally weighs the same as my 5 inch, and it's, you know, I don't know. Leave that up for the sun. But, now onto some positives. The best micro frame I, had, I have ever built or flown so far. Now, the first micro I ever had was the King Kong 90 GT which was a super cool and super fun micro. But I kind of grew out of it and it kind of came a little power, a little powerless, you know what I mean? Needed a little more power. So I kind of dissected that thing, got some better ESCs and some faster motors and I've been flying that around and that's had problems. You know, the motors burn out because they're cheap. They're, they, I was using a 1104, DYS 1104 motors. Any which way, moving on. To the best one that I, and I built this, Okay. The number one thing I see about micros, problems I see, is the frame. This is a four millimeter bottom plate. You're not going to break it. Every micro I've had, I've broken and I had to re glue or re epoxy. Um, I have a real HCC 130 millimeter frame that looks cool, flies great, but it's only like a one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter bottom plate and it just keeps breaking. So you got a four millimeter bottom plate. You got full M3 um, standoffs here. It's a 112 millimeter wheelbase that actually flies full three inch props. Like they're, it fit. This is a full three inch prop one here. All right. It also can run 11 size motors, 13 size motors, and 14 size motors. So definitely gonna try to upgrade this with some 14 um, 1406 motors. So that's cool. It's kind of got a lot of motor options. It has a 20 by 20 flight stack in here. Uh, this is the Raptor S 12 amp, uh, 12 amp 20 by 20 stack. So it's, I got it running 3.17 beta flight. Uh, I'm testing out this uh, D8 micro receiver in here. So I got you know just a single antenna. 
Um, it, to me, honestly, it's just clean and simple. The top camera pod is made for an all-in-one. This is the uh, Ishin VTX-05, which I have a review coming out for, or it might be up, it might not. So that fits in here, kind of see how it like, kind of fits in this frame with these couple standoffs. And then it just goes to this top plate, and then the top plate goes on here. The stack is sitting right there, real nice and neat. XT30 off the back. I know this is kind of really ugly, but I really had like nowhere to put it, and I have to work in it. It doesn't have OSD, so it has to have a beeper, or else I have no other way to help me to find it. Um, you know, because if you have OSD and you record, or you have your voltage, you know, you know when to bring it down, or you can go back through your, your DVR and check it out. You know, that's a way, but I'd rather have a beeper on here so I can help me find it. But uh, I'm going to look for a smaller option on that. But anyway, that aside, this thing, check this out. I'll have the link in the, in, I'll have the uh, link for the, for the frame. But if you want to build a super awesome freaking micro, uh, that kind of gives you a lot of flexibility. It's a 20 millimeter stack. It takes an all-in-one camera, and it takes up 11s, 13s, 14 size motors. So kind of gives you a lot of options. There's a lot of cool uh, 20 millimeter stuff coming out. Uh, the all-in-one cameras are pretty good. I, I really don't have an issue with these. These newer V Ishin ones, pretty good. I mean, I get great range on my Zero Three. I've been flying that forever. So that's pretty much it. I hope you got a laugh at the uh, turtle mode in the beginning. My little smoke mode there in the middle. Whoops, stuff happens. Everybody smokes some things at times. It is what it is. I even checked continuity and still smoked it up. So, All right, I know there's a lot of rambling about different stuff. Uh, four inch, I don't know. Verdict's still out. Turtle mode, fantastic. Racer Star Motors, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this super dope 112 millimeter micro frame. Ding ding, winner winner. And that pretty much covers everything I got to say for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Alright, so starting off here upside down. Let me check out turtle mode again. Uh, super awesome, useful uh, tool there. So if you haven't been able to check that out, definitely check it out. Alright, so. You can kind of see some of the desyncs. I'll try to point them out. Because um, I'm flying kind of easy. And they don't really affect me too much when you're kind of just cruising. Let's see. That one right there just kind of bucked a little to the... A little bit. They're right there again. You seen it jump? There, right there again, it kind of jumped as I went up. So yeah, the desyncing on these motors is, is a pain in the ass, and I'm kind of nervous, like, you know, if it's going to do that in the middle of a maneuver, it might, might, you know, knock out, or might be a little worse than just a little dip or a little dive. So I'm going to be probably taking these motors off and getting something else, but... <clears throat> other than that it flies pretty well um you know so buy at your own risk all right you can finish up the dvr we're about to run into the tree here and uh and that's it thanks for watching see you on the next one